Dr. Bob here again, and uh, I'm gonna stick with coronavirus for a little while longer because I promised you guys that periodically you'd hear me ranting and raving about uh, when I've perceived corruption in the profit-driven disease model of medicine. And some of what I see with this coronavirus actually makes me happy, not, not the virus, obviously, but the approach, which I agree with. Now, I have this slide up. It's uh, active off of the news, and it shows that worldwide cases, there's 640,000, and total deaths, 30,000. And I guess in the US, 112,000, and total deaths, 1,800. And I think this virus is a little, more transmissible than the flu. And I think it probably has a little higher mortality rate, although we don't really have as good an idea of how prevalent the virus is, so we may be overestimating the mortality rate. But here's my point. What they're doing is telling people that are not seriously compromised, not sick, breathing okay, maybe feel bad, have a cold, run a fever, Hey, that's not a reason to go to the ER. That's not a reason to go see your doctor. Let's not contaminate the medical environment and our medical workers with this virus and promote the propagation of it and harm people because the compromised individuals that will get sick if they get this virus will um, be the ones that will be most likely uh, to die, and you're taking the virus to them because it's the old sick people that have to seek medical care regularly. Okay, makes sense. Smart plan, I agree. Especially when you look at how transmissible this virus is and the whole flattening of the curve concept because it looks like if we don't do something, there will be so much virus so quickly and clearly a percentage of people are gonna to deteriorate to the point where they need mechanical ventilation or at least ICU admission and we won't be able to take care of everybody due to a lack of hospital beds. So the whole strategy makes sense, I'm in favor. All right. So I've been screaming from the rooftops for most of my career and definitely the last five years. 2017, 2018 flu season was severe for all US populations and resulted in an estimated 959,000 hospitalizations and 61,000 deaths. That's twice as many as has occurred worldwide, okay? With this whole ep pandemic, okay? twice as many in the U.S. in that flu season. So, like this virus, the flu takes out the weak part of the herd. This virus is a little different, and I mean, there's some subtleties, but overall, similar sort of issue. But yet, I worked in a county in eastern Montana during that season, and we were swamped. We were in the dark blue, okay? Meaning that there was the highest density per capita in the county I was working in. And I was so tired of seeing fever, cough, sore throat pop up on the board. And I was behind, I had 10 hour waits because it's a single ED, ER. I'm swamped by people that don't need to be seen by me. Okay, because they're not sick enough to be an emergency. And of course, all the offices are full of those. And here's the problem. The people that I'm seeing, the 20 year old person who feels bad with the flu is sitting in the ER waiting room for that eight hour wait, blowing their nose, touching the armrests, reading the magazines. They got a little kitty PlayStation area on the floor where the kids are drooling on the toys. And it's like, we're oblivious to this. Why then, in 2017, 2018, and last year, in fact, I watched the, the Aftermath CDC Symposium on Influenza 
in the early fall of 2019. And basically, they were really pushing for early Tamiflu. Aha! Disease model profit driven advice. Get to your doctor right away because there's a pill. Here's the deal though, that pill is not very effective. It's only effective if it's initiated within 48 hours, but the vast majority of the healthy part of the herd will get the flu, feel bad, get over it, and go back to work with no long-term sequelae. So why are we driving them to go to the ER and go to their doctor's office? And basically, I view the ER waiting room as the number one vector for viral illnesses. I'll tell you why. Because stuff travels downhill and big pharma's at the top. Now look, I already told you, they produce life-saving stuff. We need antibiotics, thrombolytics. I mean, there's all kinds of things that Big Farm is doing for us. And they may come up with a pill that has a significant reduction in mortality for this gig. All I'm saying is, look, be a good citizen. If you are sick with what you probably know is a viral illness, don't run to the doctor if you're not a high-risk person. Do what you're supposed to do. Stay home. Don't infect other people. Quarantine yourself, whether it's coronavirus or influenza or any other viral illness that you might contract. We don't need to be seeing you guys in the healthcare system. I was in favor of drive-through testing for influenza a long time ago. What I've said is if the, if, if the CDC and all the talking heads are going to say that Tamiflu and the other antivirals are so effective for influenza, let's allow testing without involving the medical system. And if you test positive, you can have a prescription because it's not very harmful stuff. It just doesn't do that much. There's double blind studies that show that if you get on it within 48 hours, you probably short, uh, lessen the severity of symptoms by about a third and lower the, uh, uh, the duration of symptoms by about 24 hours. Most of us would take that, but I don't think it should result in the expense of an ER visit, the testing, the medicine, and exposure of my compromised people and my other healthcare workers. All right, I'm done ranting, but I thought you ought to know that. Thanks.